In this lesson, you're going to learn how to slay riff by Mighty Riff, the intro bass solo to NIB by Black Sabbath. What's going on? My name is Jared and welcome to Beholden to the Riff, the heaviest bass lessons on YouTube. This opening bass solo sets the standard in bass playing and features some really cool techniques and some really interesting phrasing. This is killer. A little later in the video, we'll be going into one of my favorite recording stories of lore about how Geezer got his tone for this solo part. In the lesson, we'll be breaking the solo down into smaller pieces. This makes it easier to memorize, easier to learn, and easier to kind of hear the phrasing that Geezer's using in this mammoth solo. Before we get into the lesson, just want to take a second to thank the newest Beholden to the Riff patrons. We got Scott Palmer, Servando Samora, Jasmine Andrews, Lyndon Milliam, Jake Neely, Brad Cooley, Dustin Bateman, and Jean Henry Weldon. Thank you so much. Super excited about this one, so let's just get right to it. We are in standard tuning. I'll be using my PRS Kestrel bass with a set of Ernie Ball slinkies on there. So grab your racks, tune up, and let's do it. So let's check out phrase number one. All the actions happening on the fifth and seventh frets on the E, A, and D strings. Uh, the phrase is going to revolve around the root note E right here on the seventh fret A string. So here it is nice and slow. So there's a few key techniques in this phrase that you really got to get down to get it to sound like like geezer plays it on the album these things we'll, we'll find throughout the solo so it's well worth taking the time up front and it pays off throughout the whole solo so the first thing we have a bend on the fifth fret d string so this is a quarter step bend and really more of just like an attitude kind of bend so I'll play the leading up to it. Just really dig in there, just give it a little kind of grease other. Then we have another bend, a few notes later in the measure on the seventh fret D string. This is gonna be more like a traditional kind of guitar style bend where we So to get this bend on the seventh fret on the D string, really got to dig in there. Um, I like to bring uh, all my fingers in for a little support just so I can get enough bend on there. So let's go through the phrase one more time. Really try to nail these bends. Here it is up to speed. That's how every song should start. So a couple things in phrase number two. We're going to have another one of those attitude bends. Same spot, fifth fret, D string. And we're going to work our way up to the ninth fret. So we're going to shift positions and be up here, seventh fret, ninth fret on the D and G strings. Here it is nice and slow. Mm -hmm. 
So I think of this phrase as kind of groupings of three notes, kind of a sequence of three notes. So the first three, next three, next three. Then we have one extra ninth fret for good measure. So here's the phrase again. I'll put a little space in between those sequences of three. This. So here it is, up to full speed. Phrase number three, we're going to start pretty much where we left off. Ninth fret, G string. We're going to essentially work our way back down to the root note, seventh fret on the A string. Phrase comes in with a half step bend on the ninth fret. And I'm going to break this up into two smaller pieces just to kind of make a little make it a little more clear hopefully easier to remember at least for me uh, so here's the first half gonna end on that root note So the second half of the phrase, we're going to start on that seventh fret on the A string. I like to think of this note as both the end of the first half of the phrase and the beginning of the second half of the phrase. Um, I marked it in the tab uh, using linking note to kind of point out this note. So here's the first half again. Here's the entire phrase three. So the second half of the phrase, we're gonna start on that linking note here, seventh fret, A string. And the end of the phrase, we're gonna do this really cool kind of lick here, this slide from eight to seven, and then pull off from seven to five. So here's phrase three all the way through. Uh, try try hearing that seventh fret as that kind of both the, the ending of the first half and the beginning of the second half. It really helped me kind of memorize this and, and kind of make sense of, of the phrasing. So here's phrase three at full speed. This slide thing took a ridiculous amount of practice. Really tricky to, to land this. Really got to sort out your right hand. So phrase four, we're going to start on the seventh fret A string, our root note, and we're going to work our way down to the lower octave root note, open E. So here's the first measure of the phrase just walking down. The middle part of the phrase, we're going to start with our third finger on the fifth fret E string, and we're going to do kind of one of these grace note slides, one of these quick slides. It's We want to start with our third finger so we can slide into the best position, the most efficient position we can be in here. Setting us up so we can use our first and third fingers on, for the fifth and seventh frets here. So here's the middle part, phrase four, starting on that grace note. Another little bend on five here. So here's the last part of the phrase. We're gonna have a little bend here on the seventh fret D string, and we're gonna end back that seventh fret A string. Here's that third part of phrase three. Starts fifth fret D string, got a bend on the seventh fret D string, and we're gonna end on the seventh fret A string.
So here's the entire phrase for. So by breaking it into three phrases, it really helped me to, to kind of hear and understand the, the kind of essence of this phrase. So we start. So you can kind of see how it, how it flows. So here it is full speed. So phrase five, we're going to start at the end of measure six. First note's going to be fifth fret D string. Immediately, we're going to do a grace note slide from seven to nine. Shifting positions. We're going to work our way up to ninth fret G and then all the way back down, ending once again on our root note. A lot of action in between. So here it is, all the way through nice and slow. Here it is, full speed. While working the song up and, you know, listening to it over and over, uh, I really wanted to try to emulate Geezer's tone. So I, you know, did a little research. And when I found out the legend of the recording session, I mean, it became one of my all-time favorite stories. So, so what happened is they were in the studio and they kind of needed something to, to fill out the album. And NIB was kind of a riff they just kept jamming on at concerts. In addition to that, Geezer would do these 10 minute long bass solos to kind of fill time. So what they decided to do was to use a little bit of the solo that Geezer had been, you know, kind of playing and to use this riff and to kind of, you know, record it, and, you know, essentially made up a song, I mean, <laughs> on the spot. When it was Geezer's turn to lay down that intro solo, he just kind of started playing and they just recorded you know, kind of just like an improv. So when it was Geezer's turn to record that opening solo, he just basically, you know, started playing. They hit record and he just, you know, started improvising. And he didn't realize that he actually had the wah pedal on and it was at about, you know, halfway down. And it gave this just sweet, you know, kind of really unique tone. And he had, you know, no idea that it was even happening. In addition to that, he wasn't even using a bass amp. He was using a 70 watt Laney guitar head, ran through a cabinet that three of the four speakers were working. I just love this story. And it's, you know, it's one of these play from your heart, play what you feel, and it's going to be great. Doesn't matter what kind of gear you have or, or don't have, just phrase number six, we're going to start seventh note, A string, our root note. This is another one of those linking notes. So this is both the last note in phrase number five and the first note of phrase number six. Kind of when practicing this to practice it in smaller chunks, just to make it you know a little bit easier to memorize. Um, and by starting it here, it just made more musical sense. Um, it's you know it has a distinct starting point and it's the root note. And the phrase is going to end on a root note. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully that helps you learn it. Uh, here's phrase number six, nice and slow. So here's the first half of the phrase. Once again, kind of like a guitar part. Second half of the phrase starts fifth fret. Just walks right down. Here's phrase six all the way through, slowly. Mm -hmm. 
we got a little position shift here coming from the band here. So I, I like to play fifth fret, third fret first string here as well. So here's phrase six, full speed. So I'm going to play phrase seven all the way through. It's built on things that we've been playing up until now, other than switching up the timing. So I'll play it all the way through just so you can hear it. So the beginning of phrase seven could just as easily been the end of phrase six. But I just wanted to keep them all about the same length. So here's the first half of phrase seven. So the trickiest part here is to just hold the seventh fret for a for a three count. Then we go and cut it after that fifth fret here, this little bend. Here's phrase seven all the way, slow. And up to speed. So cool how he just cuts it, just chokes it off right there. It's so cool. Here's phrase eight all the way through. Once again, built on similar ideas as we've been playing before, but he does shake up the timing a little bit. Here's the first two measures, the first half. Second half starts here, fifth fret, A string. Here's phrase eight. All the way through, nice and slow. And up to speed. Hard to get those bands in there, man. Wow. Next phrase, nice and slow. Similar stuff, except the second half. Um, gets a little busier and some really cool timing, but let's check it out first. So the phrase starts out, ninth fret position up here. That alone, that alone is worth learning. We go. Amazing. That making this jump from the ninth fret down to the fifth fret and land on that bend can can get a, a bit much when it's when it's up to speed, but you know, just spend a little time and, and you'll get it no time. The next part is kind of starts with a bend on the fifth fret. And I'm not exactly sure what he's doing, but I kind of hear it as uh, pull off 7-5 open on the A string. Then 7th fret, E string. Something like that. Not completely sure what he's doing, but that's kind of how it sounds. Here's the whole thing one more time, nice and slow. I think I ended it wrong. Here it is one more time. Here it is up to full speed. Full 
raise 10, starts on the seventh fret once again, A string, and really just throws us for a loop. It really changes up the timing, almost does like kind of like a jazzy walking bass line kind of feel out of nowhere. And coming out of this really fast run, this then it just, just awesome. So here's phrase 10 all the way through. This phrase just grooving. So let's check out phrase 10 full speed, and then we'll play phrase nine and phrase 10. So you can kind of hear that quick change. So phrase 10. So here's phrase nine and 10 full speed played together. So you can really hear that, that change in rhythm. So much fun to play that one. Phrase 11, let's just play it all the way through. A little different timing, and we're gonna end with those grace notes. But let's do it. All right, here's, here's that last phrase, full speed. Thank you so much for checking out the lesson. Really hope it helped you out. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn some more Sabbath, here's a link for you for Super Knot.